big things are happening and you can get involved. So happy feast day, first of all, of Our Lady of Victory, also known as Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, the 7th of October. And October is the, the month of the rosary within the, the Catholic Church. Why is this? Well, today, 7th of October, 2021, marks the 450th anniversary of the Battle of Lepanto. It was a really significant um, victory for Christianity, effectively against the Ottoman Empire in 1571. So for literally centuries leading up to this battle, basically um, not being overly significant in terms of volume of people, but more of a moral thing and a confidence thing, or a morale thing, sorry, and a confidence thing for, for the Christians at the time. Um, it, it marked a real turning point there. And basically what happened was it was the largest naval battle in Western history. There were, under um, Sultan Salim II, there was a fleet for the Ottoman Empire of almost 300 galleys, which supported 35,000 soldiers. And they were up against 30,000 soldiers of the, the Holy League, what was known at the time um, under, led by Don John of Austria. Um, so the Christians had closer to 200 galleys and only 30,000 men, whereas the Ottoman Empire had 35,000 men and then something closer to 300 galleys, warships effectively. Prior to the battle, and bearing in mind that like um, Christians were being dominated um, for, for, for multiple centuries at this stage. Um, prior to the battle, Pope Pius V at the time ordered, I think the fasting thing here is incredibly interesting in different ways, but Pope Pius, Pope Pius V ordered throughout Christ, Christendom, through, so throughout all Christian countries, for all Christians to pray the Holy Rosary that um, for, for the asking basically for the Christians to, to win the battle, for the, the Holy League to win the Battle of Lepanto. And um, every galley, so every one of the warships in the Holy League had its own chaplain. The men who were going to battle fasted for three days prior to battle, probably in ketosis, good ketosis by the time they, um, they engaged. Um, every single ship was blessed and Holy Communion and Confession were made readily available on board each ship. Also, each man carried a rosary. So um, I'll just show you that it's not actually just a bracelet. There's our little miraculous medal and St. Joseph's medal with the crucifix. Come on. Love it. But anyway, long story short, of the 35,000 of the Ottoman Empire, 25,000 of the soldiers died and something like 50 galleys were able to flee in the end. So 25,000 deaths on the Ottoman Empire side, only 7,000 of the Christians died. So it was a significant battle in terms of the percentages of lives lost at the time. And once word fed back, on the 31st of August, so a few weeks later, to um, Pope Pius V, he declared and established the 7th of October as the feast day of Our Lady of Victory, Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, which we still celebrate 450 years later today. And um, alrighty, so what's the big stuff and what, how can you get involved? So following the um, Men for Christ conference, which I had the the privilege and pleasure of being able to speak on, which was hosted on Radio Maria Ireland. Um, I got in touch with a young girl about my age who was suggesting that um, with all this talk and focus on negative things these days, such as the Great Reset, she felt, um, she feels called effectively to initiate in some way our own Great Reset of faith through the Holy Rosary. So rather than focusing on the negative set, like, and that's something that I've been really, really guilty of in the past, just seeing all these insane things that are happening in our world today and focusing too much attention on the negatives. 
this would be simply one act, one thing which we could do to focus solely on good and this concept of the great reset of faith. Um, and what it would be effectively, it's something which has been done by Father Marius on Radio Maria Ireland, um, where there's a perpetual rosary going throughout Ireland, which basically means you have one person praying the rosary at all times. So one person has to just basically keep saying the rosary as many times as you can within one hour, and then someone else basically takes over. So our idea is basically that we will um, hope to, God willing, with the help of our Blessed Mother, um, organize a, a worldwide perpetual rosary. So it's not something that in previous generations could have been too feasibly done or you know, organized because it's only really through the technological advances that we have at our disposal today that you're able to so quickly get in such smooth communication all around the world. So we kind of worked out. Um, it sounds like a lot of people, but you know, if the right, um, if people with larger platforms and the right people were able to share the idea well, I think that it could be very, very easily and feasibly done. So effectively, what we would require is 8,000, I think it's 8,760 people to volunteer one hour each, and that would cover an entire year. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a link to an email, or I'm gonna link a, a, put an email address in the description under, under this video. And if you would like to volunteer one hour in a year and just say the rosary for that one hour, um, you just need to put four things and email this email address. Put one, your name, two, your own email address, three, your location, just to know where you are in the world, and four, your time zone. We can work that out, obviously, but just it would just be easier if you could put those four things. So your name, your email address, where you are, and, and your time zone. And basically, our, our hope is basically that we'll, we'll, we'll get a lot more people, so there'll be numerous people doing it at once. But effectively, yeah, this would mean that there would be one person all around the world saying the rosary at all times for an entire year with the one simple message of hope of the great reset of faith, which we need more now than ever. Um, and the last thing, um, which is pretty cool, and I'd really encourage you to get rolling with it wherever you are in the world, if you're watching this. Um, so myself and a few others, first Saturday of September last month, met for the first time. I think I mentioned it in one or two previous videos. Uh, we've, called, we've, we've formed what's called the Neve Bridge Rosary Group. Neve Bridge St. Bridget's is my Gaelic football team. That's our club jersey behind us. Um, also, the day before we kind of... Um, I, I met a, a gentleman who suggested the idea of doing this. And when I met him for the first time, the previous day, he had his um, youngest daughter was baptized and her name is Bridge. So that's kind of where we got the idea for the name, effectively. But um, it's our parish as well, Neve Bridge is St. Bridget. But basically what we were doing was trying to form a men's rosary group. Um, just again, getting this idea of like, allowing an opportunity to create some form of bonding and brotherhood through faith and learning more about it, just for ordinary lay people um, or, or anyone effectively to get involved with. But we're specifically just looking at, um, at just men to have this opportunity because it's a constant learning journey. And, and we've pretty much all, I would imagine, be, been guilty of not learning enough and not being encouraged to learn enough um, throughout recent generations about our beautiful faith. So it's gone from strength to strength strength to strength quite quickly, which is very encouraging um, because we've not put that much effort into it, but four people we had the first month and then we had nine basically at the start of October. And now we're up to like 11 and there's another couple of people who are looking to join as well. So um, our, our idea was basically just to we'll have a WhatsApp group going, but we we're just going to meet up first Saturday of every month pray the day's mysteries of the rosary together but 
something simultaneously that's happening. I'll not say coincidentally, I'll say it's more providential than that. But in, so I'm based in Belfast, in Derry, which is 90 miles away or something like that. There was another men's rosary meetup that was arranged on the same Saturday morning that we just met there at the beginning of October, um, last Saturday. And there were about 50 or 60 men outside the Guild Hall in Derry City Centre, basically, who quite publicly were on their knees praying the day's mysteries of the rosary. That was wonderful. Um, we got word of it, but it's slightly far away. And it was only the second time that we were doing our own meetups. So we just agreed we would do it as normal for the second time. But they're now moving for... For the, at the first Saturday of November next month, instead of doing it, doing it in Derry, they're going to do it in Newry City. So we're going to now join them. And, you know, there were some videos going, I wouldn't say viral, but certainly I had it shared around in a few different groups um, or received it. So the, there's definitely some more knowledge being spread about this happening. So I would be very hopeful that many more people will be joining it. Many more men in particular will be joining it in Uri, first Saturday of November. And um, we we'll certainly be there. Rosary beads and all. And yeah, absolutely. We actually got inspiration from seeing a picture that was shared or, or a few pictures that were shared on Twitter from this happening a couple of months ago in Poland. The, the brave Polish men leading the line as is standard. Um, obviously there's throughout the 20th century, the Poles had, um, numerous struggles between um, what happened during World War II under Nazi occupation to then what happened under Soviet occupation um, under Stalin. So like the, the, the kind of knowledge of the necessity for faith and freedom is so fresh in the minds of the, the Polish people. Whereas many of us have got um, sloppy, entitled, forgetful of these important lessons of the past of what it is we need to be resisting fighting for pushing towards saying no to and again more importantly than anything maintaining and learning more about our faith um, and trying to live more faithful lives so this is a wonderful way of doing it and increasing kind of holy virtue in your own life and um, since i've started trying to say the rosary every day i say trying because some weeks are better than others and like everyone else, I'm a mess. Um, yeah, from the beginning, from the beginning of 2021, roughly, I've been trying to say it every day, and like the graces that I've received from it, and the improvements that I've had in my life are immeasurable, and I'm becoming a different person through it. And um, I would argue, at least looking at my own self, a much better person as a result, and hopefully a much holier person. So I would encourage you to wherever you are, because I know that like. If this is not something that you've ever even done or something like that, that like you don't want to just jump out in public and start saying the rosary. But wherever you are, I would encourage you to just push yourselves a little. So if you say a few prayers, consider saying the rosary, you know, or consider learning about it, searching some videos about it. Or if you're saying it daily, maybe do push yourself and see if you can look to do it in a more public way. Just turn the screw a little and make yourself just a little more uncomfortable. And you'll get more brave from it and you'll be able to do more incrementally in time and you'll just be given more graces from it um i'm gonna ramble on too much here so that's pretty much it remember if you would like to get involved in the perpetual rosary the worldwide perpetual rosary which hopefully we will be able to share in a more virulent way through getting other people involved um yeah just link description We'll have an email address, name, email address, location, and your time zone. Much love. God bless. Keep the faith.